Welcome back to the Young Shakespeare Podcast. Today, I have the pleasure of talking to Brian Olson of RC Sports Star at Dover Sherburn High School. He plays baseball, basketball, and football. Uh, Brian, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me, Dan. You know, I wanted to get you on as soon as possible. Last Friday night, today it's Sunday afternoon. I'm going to get this podcast out ASAP. Last Friday night, you called game in the big rivalry game against Medfield. What was that last uh, moment like in double OT against Medfield? It's a crazy experience. Um, even even without fans, I mean, the uh, whole team rushed the court. Uh, real buzzer beater to beat the rivals. Uh, double OT, I was exhausted. Uh, it's truly a dream. Um, I, everyone thought that Luke's, Luke's three was going to be money. Uh, perfect rebound, just fade away at the, at the elbow and swish. <laughs> yeah, how did Coach Grady draw that play up? going into 16 seconds um, clock or something. Um, so they would inbound it, and the Luke would be in the corner, I think, and then someone would sit a down screen for Luke. Zach would do a dribble handoff, and then I think Luke would attack a pull-up jumper, lay out, try to get fouled or something. And then uh, as the play was going, I think they were trying to blow up that play. Like They, they cheated. They, I think they knew it was, it was trying to go to Luke. Mm. So they were trying to cheat on Luke, and then Zach try, like, kind of took it himself. And then Luke came around him and shot the three and then rebounded. What, what was going through your head when Luke pulled up? It was a tricky three for sure. But what, what were your thoughts? Did you think it was in? Did you think it was money? What did you think? Uh, I thought it was money just because I, right, I was right under the basket. I think it was, it was front rim, I think. So I, I, th I think I was kind of like towards Luke's side. And, and he was, he was, I think he was shooting well the entire game. So I think everyone was in the gym thought it was money, but. And then when it didn't go in, what was like, that was like a fantastic rebound too. I know, you know, don't want to overlook that at all. How did you, how did you grab that board? Uh, I think it just came like perfectly to me. Uh, actually, they didn't really box me out, which was kind <laughs> of bad on their part, but it just, it long rebound, big shot, long rebound, came right to me, like one dribble. Just like fade away. Yeah, perfect. Oh shoot! So I'm in uh -oh. North Carolina, and the, uh, the the infrastructure is not made for the inch of snow we've gotten today. So if got an inch of snow out, in North Carolina, yeah, something like that. If the if the power goes out, I have not. Um, I'm not ghosting you. It's just that I'm in North Carolina, and they can't handle like the sleet or whatever. So I definitely could see the power going out in this building. Um, damn. Anyways, might as well go on, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, when you got the ball, you had a good sense of the time that was on the clock, right? Because you kind of put it up at the perfect time. I remember I was yelling. I go, put it. I was like, I said, yeah. put it back or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think I watched that. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Me and, and John and Brett were, like, stressed beyond belief. But you knew, like, where the clock was at. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I think I saw the clock, like, as uh, as I was watching the ball, I think it was at like four or five seconds, and I knew it just. Uh, it, I didn't really know that it was a perfect timing, but it was. Yeah, and then everyone rushed. <laughs> the JV team rushed the court. Yeah, I think it was <laughs> Rohan Bader that, that rushed the court. Yeah. yeah, that was crazy. And then, um, so you you mentioned like double overtime. You were tired at that point. Yeah, so tired. And I think everyone was tired. Like after after the uh after the game, we were all like, I did not want to go into a third overtime. Like thank God. <laughs> and I think we, I was talking with coach on Saturday and he said he had a fourth overtime game against Bellingham like three years ago or something. So I can't imagine I can't imagine what that'd be like. Get home at like ten like ten thirty. <laughs> yeah, I think the guys in the stream were actually talking about that. Bellingham or Medway or something like that where they went into a bunch of yeah it was something I think it was Bellingham yeah and it's I think it's I didn't consider that how taxing it is mentally and physically to go that deep into a game um mm -hmm. and, a, and a heated game too was there what what felt like was at stake during that game against Medfield uh just bragging rights you know um we beat them in football. We crushed them in football. Football, <laughs> and that big, that big uh, incident with the Instagram with the 
with the chit chat on Instagram. Uh, just bragging rights in general. Um, just the rivalry. Did you get a chance to see um, some of your former football teammates were actually mixing it up in the uh, YouTube chat of the DSC TV live stream with the Medfield people? Um, I did not get to see it. Who was doing it? Uh, so T Derek Daly put something in about um, he was calling the Medfield kids soft or something, and then they were they were making fun of him, and he was like, well, what happened to your quarterback on Thanksgiving or something? Got rocked. I think I think Griffin Rossbottom was like calling them bozos or something. <laughs> yeah, I think someone might have said that. Uh, I couldn't I couldn't tell whose uh, username it was, but yeah, it was. And then they I so I was like laughing at the chat, and then like I come back ten minutes later, and it's just chat is dis disabled. Like, <laughs> he couldn't comment anymore. Yeah, that was crazy. Was there was it all business on the floor, or were guys? talking on the floor to each other was there back and forth there um there wasn't really any talking it was, it was i feel like whenever we play them like the the scrappiness doesn't come out during the game i think there's like more sportsmanship between the two teams mm. and it's more like talk outside of the game like oh we beat you in football or something but <laughs> i think i think when we play each other there's like a lot of respect for each other especially especially because those two games those two teams were like very good teams and it was a very close game. I think everyone was just respecting each other. Yeah, it's. I think it's hard to come out of a battle like that where everyone has so much heart and it goes down and such an evenly matched game. Um, it's hard to come out of that not respecting the guys you were playing against. Mm -hmm. What did you see that was strong at a medfield? What did they do well? Obviously, they were. they had a few guys that were grabbing boards and stuff like that. What did you see out of them? Yeah, I think their rebounding was was like pretty much like the reason it was so close. Um, I think they attacked the basket really well. Uh, they played a they played a pretty good zone. I think they played a one two two press or something. They played that pretty good. Um, I think we definitely need to work on our uh, our play against pressure. And uh, I think they played a very good game, but so did we, and we just came out on top. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Um, sorry, I'm getting thrown off a little bit. My lights are getting are flickering a little bit just here and there. Um, what uh, that uh, Medfield team too? They had that one um, redhead. Do you know what his name was? I'm blanking on his name. I think he's number two. <clears throat> was it Cronin? No, Cronin is like kind of blonde. I think. I don't know. Anyways, the big redhead um, was taking it to the hoop. Things got like physical uh, a lot in my stream of it. Uh, the guys, the experienced, you know, basketball players were saying this officiating is super inconsistent. Did you have any issues with the officiating or did you think it was fine? Um, I thought the officiating was actually pretty good. Uh, might have been a little arm bar in there, uh, but you know, you gotta, you gotta adjust. It's they're the, they're like the principles of the game. Like you gotta adjust to their rules, their Ooh. their style of play. So you gotta, you kind of just have to like adjust your game to whatever they think. That's a that's a sick line. I like that. They're the principles of the game. You gotta adjust to their rules. Wow, I didn't, I never thought of it like that. So that's interesting. Um, yeah, just a a totally tight, contentious game all the way through. Take me back a little bit too to the Hopkinton game. That's a really good team. I think an underrated team that's had a hard schedule. They, mm -hmm. Their losses have come to like Norwood and Westwood, two powerhouses, and to DS, obviously. So I think that's definitely an underrated team. Nate Casper and company. Um, what was the key to getting that one over Hopkinton? Uh, I think the key was just um, containing Nate Casper. He's he's like an awesome player. He just gets to the rim. You can't really block him. He just... And he just gets to the rim. He's a great free throw shooter. Uh, and they also have, like, they surround him with shooters. Pretty much everyone on the team can shoot. Um, there's this kid, Evan, I, I can't forget his last name. Uh, Mirazimi. Yeah, Mirazimi. Uh, I think he's coming off injury, but he he still just shot the lights out during that game. And uh, they pretty much just surround him with, with shooters, and you can't really – you have to help, but then you have to get back to the shooters, and it's kind of like – what, what can you do? But 
Yeah, I believe he's coming off um an ankle fracture. Yeah. Um, I think I think he's he's very good. I think he played on the Magic team. I think he plays for Middlesex Magic. Yeah, we, you know what's interesting? So you've got baseball and football and basketball. Uh, you could, I mean, you're good enough at each and every sport that you could go and do a bunch of summer stuff for each. Like kids that are obsessed with basketball will do magic, you know, baseball, they'll do teams. But, I mean, you only have so much time. Mm-hmm. Uh, during the summers, I pretty much just play baseball in summer. Uh and it's actually really fun. We go, we travel to places. We travel to uh, Portland, Maine. We went to Saratoga Springs. Actually, in Saratoga Springs, we went to like the racehorsing. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, Dave Portnoy was there. We actually no got way. like a picture with him. Like our our baseball team got a picture with him, and he had this giant, like huge wad of cash in his pocket when we were taking a picture with him. <laughs> That's hilarious, dude! Oh my god! And the uh, yeah, go you ahead. know, like the jockeys, like the jockeys after the race, they would walk out and they were like covered in mud from the track, and they're all just like four foot <laughs> ten, and they're all tiny. And we, and like our our team has a bunch of big guys, so we would just take a picture with whoever the winner was, and they were like four foot five or something. They were tiny. <laughs> yeah, crazy. They got to be wicked light to make that work. Yeah. Where would you say in terms of like, because on the topic, you know, picking what to focus on in the summer, like if you were to rank ba- like baseball, football, and basketball based on what you like the most and then what you think you're the best at, how would you rank them? Uh, all right. Let's start with um, what I think I'm best at. I think I'm best at baseball. And then I think I'm – even though it was my first year, I think I'm better at football than basketball. Mm. So I think it goes baseball, football, than basketball. And for which I like most, everyone asks me this. It's, <laughs> uh, it's very hard. Um, I think I like baseball the most just because um, I love my team. And like the, the kids we have on our team, they're – they're great guys, and uh, I love my coach. Um, and then second, it's mm, tough. I think I'd have to go basketball just because, like, the team has such great chemistry. I'm buddies with all the kids on my team, mm-hmm. especially like a, like a, there's a bunch of sophomores on the team. We've been playing together since since like fourth grade. It's just crazy to have us all on the same varsity team. And then uh, football, I, I, I like, don't get me wrong, I love football, but it's just like a kind of a grind more than the other sports, like mm. practice every day, put on your pads. Um, but I also love the team. Like everyone's a great, everyone's great on the team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say in basketball and baseball, you probably never had any upperclassmen force you to push their car through town center. Oh, yeah. I was actually going to talk about that. <laughs> I was, that was hoping crazy. we would. Tell, was actually, tell people the story. Um, all right. So Johnny Bennett, his car is like, I don't even know how, how old it is. It was, it's it's like, pretty old. It's a 2001 Toyota Avalon. It was my yeah, grandfather's. It's, it's tiny. Time. It's always trashed. It's yeah. always trashed with Fantas, <laughs> with, with Fanta bottles and soda bottles. And it's, I think I, like a, he just had his like lacrosse pads the cross helmet in the front seat and you just have it like it was be like fall and you just have his lacrosse helmet you know what I'm <laughs> and um his gas gauge like doesn't really work so he just drives it on empty when it says it's empty for like i don't know like 20 miles 20 miles and when I, like i would get in the car and, John, and johnny would be like oh yep i'm riding on empty right now <laughs> so i'd just be like all right i hope we don't um hope we don't get the don't hope it don't run out of gas <laughs> and then uh so johnny drove me to, to a pasta dinner at Derek daly's house and then it was like sputtering on the way there so then i was like oh i don't think we're gonna make it back and then um on the way back we it was sputtering even more and then we got to the intersection uh in dover center with like the gas station and the dover deli and it just died and 
and uh, we had to get out. We didn't really know what to do because Johnny, I don't think Johnny had ever done that before. <laughs> but uh, we had to get out and Cole Canty actually was just coming from a Zavarian pasta dinner. And he's like, like Cole Canty is like the perfect person to push a car with you. Yeah. It's like huge. Yeah, he's a starting and, uh, lineman for Zavarian. Yeah, for yeah, life. huge. And then we just got out of the car and Cole Canty like pulled up to the intersection. He's like, do you guys need help? And we're like, uh, Cole Canty, of course. <laughs> so then he just gets in the middle and we all have to push the car into the, like the mobile <laughs> and then uh it was crazy never done it before but i'll remember that it's a crazy story what it was it it's a kind of a lighter car was it easy to push was it or was i mean you must have pushed it a little bit uphill though to get it up to them yeah it was it was a little uphill but uh cole canty sure did help he's he's a big boy cole canty um <laughs> It, was, it wasn't that hard. Once you got it started, it kind of like gained momentum. But uh, the start was pretty hard. And some some random, like, biker guy who was biking at, like, 9 o'clock at night just, like, helped us too, but which, which was a little weird. <laughs> Helpful. Yeah. That, uh, that was my car for a while, and it was my sister's and my grandfather's. So it's seen, it's seen a lot of action. It's seen a lot of miles. Um, it's, uh, it's almost at 200K miles. Is it? Okay. Yeah. I always, I always check the, the odometer when I'm in there. Yeah, it's trash. Does it ever, have you ever done the thing when you're in the car and then it just starts like shaking, like almost like back and forth? Oh yeah. The massage. Oh yeah. It gives you the massage. What's it's it, great. What uh, fresh off, fresh off the practice and you get a nice massage out of John's car. <laughs> Perfect. He, he seems like way less worried about it than oh, I am. Totally. Like I was driving it uh, when I was in, uh, I went to like pick up food in Medfield and then on the way back, it was like going like back yeah. more than, I was like, oh shit, like I better make it home. I'm nervous. Um, and he always has, he, he never, he doesn't even have any ox in there. So we always just play some, he always has, he has a station. I think it's like 105, seven yeah. and he just plays some eighties music. And it's actually pretty good. I, I like eighties music, but uh, it's pretty well, the, funny that he doesn't have ox. Yeah. So there's no ox, but the channels in there, are like actually pretty good the music if you go to like yeah. 3.3 3 or whatever yeah. it's tough and then sometimes um we fight over it because he won't sometimes won't want to listen to that and he'll just like when he's driving sometimes he'll just take out his phone and then he'll put it in like the cup holder to get the most audio yeah. possible and then he'll just put like olivia rodrigo or some like weird oh, the classic olivia rodrigo rodrigo <laughs> Are you on the train with her? Would you say you're a supporter? No, or do you I'm, think weird? I'm not on the train with Olivia Rodrigo. I do not like Olivia Rodrigo songs. I think she does a lot of whining, personally. Yeah. She's, yeah, she's not. She's, her songs are pretty catchy, but I just don't like, I just don't like, like, Olivia Rodrigo. <laughs> yeah, it's good music. It's good music, for sure, that you can uh, get down to, for sure. Um switching back a little bit T tell me about the medway game so what's I, I and i always ask now i used to just say oh your record's this right and i embarrass myself constantly because max preps lies for the record what is your, for the record what is your record now um it's eight and one i believe okay eight and one so the one loss of course is to medway medway's a fine team uh magliaro uh yeah. arrogant i think they're, they got some good players um but it's a weird one to have your one loss over. You guys were up at the half. What went wrong during that game? I think Magliar just caught fire. I mean, he's he shot, um, I don't even know, like 40% from three. I think he had 30 points. Um, I think he was the reason. Uh, he just put them on, he just put the team on his back and carried them to victory. Um I think we could have uh, I don't really remember that game too well, but I, I just, all I remember is just Maglera just shooting lights out, and he couldn't really miss. And he, their their whole team couldn't really miss. I mean, like Harrigan hit a big shot, um, and we just lost. I think it was pretty early in the season, so I guess I guess we weren't as prepared as we should have been. But wish we could get that one back. Yeah. What do you think your personal best game has been? What game have you played the best in? Um, I think I played the best in, 
our Dedham game. I think that was my season high for points. Um, Dedham game, they had this big uh, Stephen Bear. He was mm-hmm. supposed to be pretty good, and I think we locked him down pretty good. I think he had two two points. Wow. Um, me and Ethan. Ethan and I. But uh, I think we played very good defense. I think that that, that was actually a very close game. It, it, I think the score was within five or something. That was actually a very close game up, up until the end. And then um, I think I just played well that season, especially down the stretch. I think I had like six points in the second half or something. I think I had 16 in the whole thing. But I think that was my best game. Yeah, pretty incredible. What game would you say you're the most proud of from the football season? Um, probably Norton just because of like the history. I mean, wait for me or for the team, whatever. Uh, yeah, I'd say Norton just because actually, I'd say Watertown actually, or no, Medway. There we go, Medway. (laughs) Um, there's a lot lot of of favorite games. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Medway Medway was definitely most proud of, uh, just because our defense was clamps. Um, I forget the name. Oh, Matt Childs. Yeah, we, we locked down Matt Childs. Mm. He, we locked him down. He, and uh, he was very good, but we our defense just clamped him. And then um, I think it was a very close game. Uh, they had a great fan section. But um, I think we were just well prepared for that game and big win. They were a great team, and uh, I think that's a great win. Yeah. What, which was the game you pulled in three touchdowns? Did you do that twice or once? Who did you do that? Um, I pulled in three touchdowns on Bellingham and Watertown. Crazy. Is it, is it, feel, is it a weird feeling, like, <clears throat> you scoring three touchdowns, you, you had a bunch of, like, you know, big plays in that Bellingham game, but losing, that must've been a little bit bittersweet. Yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty weird. Um, I mean, I don't really know what happened. I think our, de- I think our defense didn't play as well as they could have. I think our offense was pretty good, but our, like our defense just kind of like let up a bunch of big plays. They, um, their, their quarterback, Gavin Elder, I think, he played a great game, and um, yeah, it is weird having a having a good game, but but losing. But I mean, that's you can't really do anything. Yeah, Gavin Elder uh, never opened my DM to come on the podcast, so he's sort of the villain in my story too. Yeah, he was the villain going into the game. Everyone, everyone really didn't like him. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's he's, crazy. Maybe he's just nervous to come on the podcast. It could be. After all the big names, like yeah. Brian Olson and company. Oh, by the way, I don't know how much of my uh, stream you heard, but I called you Brian Thompson a few times. I don't know. I don't know if you would was. remember who that is. No, I did not. Okay. Was- he, he, he would have graduated in, um, I want to say the class of 2015, it was like him, Mark Seisler, Andreas Kantopoulos. They were Andreas. all like, yeah. I, I tell you something about Andreas. So we had the um, uh, the alumni game. Yeah. And I think Andreas showed up, and he's like, he's huge. Like he's six six, like two two twenty at least. Mm. And he just he just destroyed us that that time. He's and he, I think he played at WPI. I think he's a thousand point scorer at WPI. He's just yeah, huge. he's an animal. <laughs> he's grown man, grown man strength. He's an animal for sure. Um, my claim to fame is that one time uh, after an indoor track practice in high school, he had come back and he was playing pickup with some of his friends, and they needed a tenth. And I came in. I didn't do much. I didn't do much in the game, but I blocked Andreas's shot one time. Yeah, that, that that was the highlight of any basketball game I've ever played. It was blocking Andreas's shot. Uh, what about, what about blocking the, uh, dunk? I forget who it was. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good With point. superior athleticism. Yeah, against, uh, Gianni Thompson from the Boston College basketball team. That was pretty good, too. I, I just, uh, I'm a shot blocker. What can I say? Me and uh, you. Rim protector. Yeah, we're, we're synonymous with shot blocking, me and you, Brian. So what I was saying was, um, this guy, Brian Thompson, 
he was just a big dude. I remember playing in middle school. Um, he was he was big like you. He had uh, the same style as you. And his name is Brian. So I, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. keep calling you Brian Thompson. But you think he, played, he you ended think up Johnny would remember him? Oh, yeah. From his, all of his, his yeah. DS history. Yeah, he ended up playing uh, football at Bowdoin. So. Oh, really? Yeah, John Johnny, Johnny would definitely remember. Him. <laughs> Let's get, I need to get something on the record right now, Brian. Right here and now, I need to get an accurate answer on this. How tall are you? I'm 6'4". On the dot. Six, uh, six, three and three quarters. Wow. This is, this is breaking news. I thought for sure you were six, four people. It's like, it's like blown up more and more. Like people are saying you're six, five, you know what I mean? No, not there yet. <laughs> I, should, I think, I think I'm done growing. Really? What yeah. You say that? Just cause the dog, I don't, I don't really eat as much anymore. Like I used to be an animal like eating. But don't I, don't, I don't really eat as much. Um, don't listen to doctors. Listen to young Shakespeare. You're going to keep growing. All right. All right. I promise. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank would you, you. Would you want to be taller? Um, I think I would, wouldn't want to be, like, too tall. I think at, like, six, six, six would be perfect. Yeah. Have you hit your head on anything yet? Uh, I, hit, I hit my head on the base pin. When I go down to the basement to play some video games, uh, I usually hit my head. Or I have to watch out for my head to hit the ceiling and going down the stairs, but that's that's about it. Word, word, dude. Um, man, that's a funny thing. Do you get a lot of bad jokes being tall? Does that affect you mentally? Nah. No. I think people, uh, they don't really make jokes about tall people. It's not that funny to make jokes about tall people like this. It's more yeah. funny to make make fun of short people. Yeah, or like fat people, gingers, like that would be way funnier. <laughs> people with weird brothers, like that's pretty weird. <laughs> yeah, weird brothers. I love that. Yeah. Um, can you dunk? I've never seen a dunk in game. I can dunk. Um, I think so I had like a rim, so prove like it a, in a game. A mini rim grazer. I I can send you a video if you want. Of a, of a dunk. Probably doctored. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I'd like to see it again. You can ask. You can ask uh, Luke if I can dunk. <laughs> or you can uh, ask Johnny. Actually, I don't think Johnny's seen me dunk. No, but yes, I can dunk. I think my I th actually in eighth grade, um, I bet like my friend group five dollars each that I could dunk in the student faculty game, but then it was canceled because of COVID, so that was brutal. And I, I don't think I would have anyways. I think I was injured. I think I had like a boot on or something. Yeah, when did you first dunk? I dunked my eighth grade year. Jesus Christ, that's too much power for an eighth grader to have. I don't like that. Uh, well, I, yeah, I wasn't really like consistently, actually. But I, I got my first dunk in eighth grade, yeah. I remember like grabbing the net in like sixth grade or something. And that I thought was cool. And then, like, if you could get the backboard by eighth grade, that was cool. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I, like, I knew, like, after after school, every every day, pretty much, I'd just go outside and just, like, try and dunk. That's all I did after school for, like, an hour. So that helped, I think. So is there anyone else besides you and Luke that can dunk on the team? Ethan likes to say he can, but he can't. He can't. Don't listen to him when he says he can. <laughs> Will, actually, Will is Will is closer than Ethan to dunk. Actually, I think Will, I think Will can get a few in there. But Ethan, nah. That's tough. <clears throat> it's a tough way to be. Um, Ethan, yeah, because how tall is Ethan? It's like six, six three. What do you think separates Ethan as a player? What it, what is his best asset? His mindset. He's very he's most competitive kid I know actually. Uh, just especially with baseball. I mean, he's a captain baseball and basketball. Uh, he just wants to win. That's all he wants to do. Yeah, he was basically locked down. Um, I know he got some fouls early, but um, I felt like he was locked down later in the Medfield game against um, 
whatever his name is. Is that fair? Is that fair to say about his defense? Uh, yeah, yeah. He actually switched on to number two, and I had to, and I guarded number three. I don't know their names, but um, yeah, he switched on, and I think number two was having a great game, and uh, Ethan kind of locked him down. But then he fouled out. I think you guys were like debating whether he fouled out or Grady just pulled him out. Yeah, he fouled out, which is kind of sad. But oh, oh, okay, yeah. So I, it's funny because there's I have like a retention graph, which basically means it shows um, here is like you know minute zero in the video, and here is an hour and forty seven minutes, and there's. A gra- and the graph is like what percentage of viewers are watching. So it starts at 100% up here. And the graph goes like this. Like if here's zero, it was like, like that. <laughs> it was like 125% were tuned in at like that um, you, for your shot, basically. And I thought yeah. that was crazy. Like everyone skipped to that part of the video. Um, yeah, and I think the climbing think the deep- in like the fourth quarter, more people wanted to watch. And then the first overtime, more yeah. people were watching the second overtime was yeah. like maximum audience yeah i think i think ds fan zone had like a watch party and they posted a bunch of like little snippets of the game yeah that's too bad was that tough not having fans for such a big game uh it's very it's uh i don't like it at all i love having fans but i mean the jv team is the, did you see the did you see medfield they had like a fan zone yeah, Chris Sullivan was like letting in the fans, but but whatever. They had like a bunch. Of, it was very actually very loud. They were, they were loud that fan zone for Medfield, but like our JV team, they like make cat noises when the other team shooting for things, which is pretty funny. It's one, it's enough. <laughs> I have to disagree. The one solace you should be able to take, <clears throat> and all those Medfield fans sneaking in. I heard they were pretending that they were someone's siblings. They were all, oh, yeah, I'm, that's my sibling. Yeah. Um, the one solace is that that shot right there, you got to devastate a crowd yeah. in person of Medfield people. So they showed up just to see that, just to see it get caught. Yeah, ruin their weekend. <laughs> Probably sulking in bed right now. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a tough Tough uh, way to finish things off uh, in that game in front of that fans. Well, did you – I was critical of the JV kids because it kind of looked like they were just standing there in their khakis, like not really doing anything. I didn't think – I um, the Medfield fans were bringing the thunder and they weren't really – Yeah, the Medfield fans like the were DS, bringing the thunder. The DS parents looked like they were like sipping white wine. They weren't worried about the game. Well, that's, you know I mean? <laughs> um, the JV kids um, – they get they actually they get pretty rowdy like during the during the Hopkinson game, um I think it's more personified like when when there's a little there's a when there's a small group of people, I think like the sounds they make are more personified like I think you know Mason Malkyanda, yeah, um his brother he was like yelling during the during the uh, Hopkinson game you could really hear it and uh, actually during the Hopkinson game um the announcer was calling mason uh his last name is melchionda and mm. he's calling him melchita or machita yeah not even close yeah that's a great example of a uh, personification yeah. thank you we gotta get we gotta get you an english class man <laughs> no i said i didn't really say personification i said personification like, yeah. I don't know how to say it. How, how would That's you like a, it? you know, like if I, if I was like, oh, this water bottle is like curvy, like a woman, that would be like personification. You know what I yeah, mean? Like I you're guess. turning an object into, you're describing it as a person. Then what, what would be the word for something? I, mean, right. I go to, I go to a state school. I'm not, you know, <laughs> I'm just helping you out here. Yeah, I know. But uh, what would be the word for like more focused on, you could really hear him like, is focused like like you could hear them more i don't know um, i don't know how you yeah, say that. trying to describe like if whatever setting brings out their their noise more or something like that yeah um augments like make lo- makes larger that could be one something like that i don't know 
it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, maybe, I mean, hey, maybe people can learn something from this episode. Um, yes. Yeah, that's that's what the podcast is all about. Making friends and teaching English lessons and stuff like that. Teaching some grammar. Yeah. All right, so let's nail down the story a little bit because I think this is quite fascinating. I remember I was up at uh, Norris Earl Field running laps and uh, over the summer getting ready for rugby. And I saw you out in the field running some routes, catching some balls, and it, you were kind of mulling over the idea of playing football. Let's get like, I'd love to hear the story of how you went from a kid that had never played football to being like a superstar on the best football team in Dover Sherbert High School history. Um, so it all started in uh, the previous baseball season. Steve-O is the coach. And uh, after, after, after one practice, he just called me over and he says, I think coach, the O-line coach is the JV coach for, 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 for baseball too. So they called me over there and said, uh, think about playing football next year? And I said, yeah, I'll give it, I'll give it a thought. And then um, during the, during the, um, what's it called? Like the banquet for, for baseball, when I was receiving, I think I got like, when I was receiving the varsity letter, he said, I'll see you next fall for football. And I said, okay. And that really like, I think that set it in stone that now that I was playing football, because if I, if I told him that I was playing football and I just didn't show up, that would just ruin it. So, and then Wait, so was it kind of on like a whim or like a gut feeling? Like he was just like, I'll see you in the fall. And you were like, yeah. Like, did you not really think about it? Uh, not really. I just, I just said, yeah. And I was, and I was, <laughs> and I was thinking of it. Um, I think I was just like, think, we were kind of on the fence about playing football just because like injuries and stuff. But like, I kind of, I, I kind of wanted to play football just because, like I had to build for it, I guess. But mm. so I kind of I kind of wanted to play it. And then he just like talked me into it. Damn. So, and so did a bunch of kids at the school. Like they'd be like, oh, you you'd be nasty at football. You're so big. Yeah. Were you was there a point, were you always confident in yourself and believed that you could make a real impact? Or was there was there doubt initially and there was a point in the season where you said, Hey, I actually, they might be right. I might have some talent at this football thing. Um, so at the beginning of the season, I was actually like, I couldn't catch a, I couldn't catch a ball. I had these, I had these big, like one of the O linemen gave me their receiving gloves, like, like football gloves and they were red and they had said Supreme on them. And I just, I'm not blaming it on the gloves, but that's, that's just the funny thing. And then I just couldn't catch a single thing. Like during the summer league for football, you like 77s, it would just like go straight through my hands and hit my butt, hit my helmet or something. And I just thought, oh, I'm not going to be able to play. I don't have the hands for football. I can't, I don't know any routes. But, Gotta be um, a left tackle, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then um, as the season went, at, um, I think during the Western game, I caught like, a dig route which is like a kind of like a post like a flat post kind of and it was like 20 yards or something that like I was like oh I can do this and then I think I caught a touchdown the game and then it just took off mm. but at the beginning of the season I was like oh this, this is going to be awful if I can't catch yeah that would be an important part of being a receiver I guess okay. what um was there any um like adjustment in you know Baseball, not much contact for the most part. Sometimes in certain, you know, instances, a little bit. Basketball can be, you know, it's a contact sport. It can be a, li a, a little bit rough. But then football is a whole new level. It's a not a contact sport. It's a collision sport. Yeah. Is there any adjusting to that? Uh, there's tons of adjusting. I mean, I didn't really play. I played lacrosse, but I, I think I quit lacrosse in like seventh, eighth grade, seventh grade. and then. Um, I think that collision part of the game is like my weakest part of the game. Um, I got to get better at that, which I will next year. But um, that's definitely the weakest part of the game, like the collision part. Just kind of rings your bell a little bit. And uh, I haven't got used to that feeling. Yeah. 
do you are you hoping to develop more of a skill set on the defensive side of the ball for next year too definitely um I think they'll need me next year on defense, especially with like our two DNs leaving, um, our middle linebacker leaving. Uh, they definitely, they definitely need some help on defense. And um, actually, the defensive positions, I started out thinking I was going to play D end, and I wasn't really good at D end. And then <laughs> um, the coaches decided to move me to outside linebacker, and um, I wasn't really good at outside linebacker either so so I think they by the end of the season they thought I was going to be a corner but I didn't really play that much defense all season so so um I'm excited for what I what they think I'm going to play next year mm. position wise on defense yeah that's crazy to imagine with with playing sports virtually year round I mean Thanksgiving and then by the next Monday you're playing basketball you know you just keep going and going are you able to keep keep up like a good regimen of weights or is that tough with the timing? Uh, it's actually pretty tough. I don't like sometimes lifts are incorporated into the like practices. Like we usually lift for like 30 minutes or something, but um, I don't really lift weights that much. Like I don't really have the time. I used to have it. I used to have a Kingsbury membership, but I paused it. Just because I didn't really have, I wasn't using it because I just didn't have any time practice after school and then homework and then another practice or something. Mm. Kingsbury, do you think Kingsbury is more of a DS gym or more of a Medfield gym? DS, just because that's what every DS kid is saying. But <laughs> it's definitely a DS gym. Yeah, I guess that's a required comment. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, I would never say it's, it's in Medfield gym. Yeah, well, it's, in, it's weird because it's in Medfield, but I always remember in high school, all the DS kids would go. Some Medfield yeah, people, it's, but like, it's, I felt like less. It's it's like closer to Dover Sherman High School than it is to Medfield High School, which is, I think I think it is. but Probably close, but yeah, I think DS. Yeah, it's, it's in like a weird part of Medfield too. It's like... It's, it's not even close to the center of midfield. Do you think there are any other sports that you could be really good at that you just like, there's only three seasons, so you can only play three sports, but that if you got a chance, you think you could maybe excel at? Uh, lacrosse, maybe. I'm not that good with the stick skills, but just like the, the running part mm. and the like, I think I could be a good midfielder. Like, just just a lot of running, being fast, and getting it up to your attack. But I don't really know how to – I don't really remember how to play lacrosse, but I think I'd be good at lacrosse. What's the biggest misconception about Brian Olson? Biggest misconception. Uh, um, that I'm not smart, maybe. Ooh. Like with the personification thing. <laughs> but uh I didn't by the way, smart. by the way, I don't mean to be a dick about that. I just thought it's that right. was funny. I just thought that was like a funny yeah. thing. I just thought that so, was funny. but uh but so you think people maybe it, it is part of it that you're such a talented athlete that maybe people want to box you in as more jockish and and that might not be representative of like your intelligence or the way you represent yourself academically or is, is that kind of the, the train of thought you're on? Yeah, that's, that's most of my train of thought. And I just, I just like don't have time for school. Like it's, I guess, but I don't really know. Is academics pretty important to you? Yeah. Very important. My parents are always on me about my academics. Hmm. What are your like study habits like? Um, I actually this year, um, I'm in the band actually, and uh, the band it counts as like an elective, so you can you can and you, and you get credits for it, mm. so you can take the band and then all of your elective like slots in your schedule they turn into DRs, so I actually have a ton of DRs this semester, mm. 
they'll actually do a ton of homework during the during the deep during like the study study periods and that that helps me a ton wow what um so you played the trumpet right before the thanksgiving day football game right you played the um yeah. the national anthem was it hard at all to like get yourself in the musical, like wanting to nail that performance and also thinking about the game and like going from like the locker room to then playing the song to then back to the field. Like, was that hard at all? Or were you able to kind of manage that? I think Miss Sullivan made it pretty easy, but um, I was actually practicing in the locker room and I and was like, oh, that's actually pretty good. So it gave me a lot of confidence, but. Ah. And then I, I played the national anthem and then I had to sprint out to, to the kickoff team. <laughs> And everyone was like, nice job, Brian. So, <laughs> That's wild. What did it feel like to play in front of everyone? Was that fun? Was it nerve-wracking? Uh, it was, it was nerve-wracking. I think I practiced like every day. I, th I think I was staying at the Lynch's because my parents went to Paris. And then my parents and my sister went to Paris. So they weren't even there. So I was staying at the Lynch's. And I had to practice my trumpet at the Lynch's, which was kind of weird. Wow. But I think I did well enough. It was sufficient. Yeah, I mean, it sounded cool. I, I don't know anything about the trumpet, but it, it sounded nice, you know? You. Um, I think one of your uh, captains put it a funny way. What did he say? It was... Uh, he said it was like marching on Man Manassas. Yeah, it's a, yeah, he said it felt like marching on Manassas or something like that. Yeah, I think, I think John said that. Yeah, is that... And that is kind of funny to think about. It almost is like being like a Union soldier and like hearing the trumpets play and like on like a yeah. day for like this if I, physical, if I had a if I had physical like a battle of wills. Yeah, especially on Thanksgiving with like American. If I, if I had a drummer, it more, it more would have been much younger. That would be sick. Do you think you'll continue to like this would be crazy if every Thanksgiving you did this? I think now I have like an obligation to. Now that I did it once, I kind of have to do it like every year. <laughs> an obligation to the people, man. What I like? Think, actually, I don't. I don't think I'm gonna do it next year because it's at Medfield. So maybe my senior year I'll do it. Yeah. What did it? Were you surprised? I mean, I think everyone kind of knew that Medfield was like in a really they're not a good team this year they're in sort of an off year of the program um so I, I don't think anyone thought it was going to be like a crazy shootout but were you surprised at all about what you saw from midfield uh not really i think we kind of dominated the entire game and um it wasn't really a challenge because i think we knew that we, like they weren't gonna be the strongest team and um I, th I don't think it was, was really a surprise. But, like, I don't think it was really bewildered by their strength. Mm. But, what What was your mindset like during that game? Last game with the seniors, Thanksgiving Day, last game of the year. I mean, what was it like for you? Uh, it's crazy. Um, a ton of people there, a ton of alumni. I mean, like I saw a bunch of my brother's friends. My brother was there. Um, just crazy atmosphere. I mean, like, but it was like 10 a.m. in the morning, so it's kind of hard to get hyped up to like 9 a.m. Get ready for the game. But I, th yeah. I think Johnny, I think Johnny got us pretty hyped up in the locker room for for the uh, for the game. But what? How did he get you guys uh, hyped up? Um, he's actually pretty fun in the locker room. He's like, he's like crazy. He um, like after after the coaches come in and they say their stuff. The captains go and Johnny gets crazy. He like bangs his head against the lockers. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Just uh just to, to be good for morale, like what he just slams it against a lock, know. multiple lockers. I don't know why he does that. It's it's beyond me why he does that, but well it sounds like it, for him. it sounds like it gets you hyped up. Yeah, I mean it gets the whole team hyped up. I mean. See your captain banging his head against the locker room like five times. Be like, oh, he's we need to be like him. He's crazy. <laughs> well, there is there's something to be said. Like, 
if you're following like a mad dog into a football game, like if some dude is like willing to slam his head into a locker five times like that, you know, your leader isn't worried about taking a big hit. Yeah. I feel like that would pump you up being like, we're the guys bringing the action today. We're bringing the hits. Yeah. Johnny, Johnny is never scared of a big hit. I mean, like, I think he got, I think he got um, like crushed in the Norton game on a kick return. And he just got straight up, like happy to be out there. He just <laughs> popped up and uh, hyped for the next play. Like he's, and coach always harps on that. I mean, like, after a big hit, Johnny always just pops up and ready, ready to do the next play, and Coach, like, loves that. Mm. Yeah, there's sort of a – not only a mentality, but a message to that if you get up. Like, if the other team can hit you and you stay down. I mean, obviously, if you're, like, seriously injured and yeah. it's not good for you to, like, stand up, then don't stand up. But if it's just pain, if you just kind of wince and lie on the ground, that definitely lets gives the other team some confidence – Versus if you pop right back up, then they think yeah. to themselves, it's like, um, it's kind of like I, I was watching this Mike Tyson documentary and it was like, someone said they like hit him with their absolute best, most powerful shot. And that's when they knew they were screwed. Cause they were like, I yeah. didn't have anything more than that. If you can give someone your best shot and they pop right back up, you're like, well, fuck, what am I going to do? I can't, yeah. this guy's indestructible. What am I, what, what am I going to do? Yeah, and they're all like celebrating like, Oh, nice hit. And then Johnny's just like, popping right back up they're like oh man this guy this guy just i just get i just clapped this guy and he just pops right back up what what else can i do yeah maybe i mean we talked earlier about developing um your like i can't remember the phrase we used but it was like um something about the the collision aspect maybe if you yeah. ram your head into a locker a few times that would be helpful maybe like practicing maybe i'll pick that up next season yeah someone's got to do it someone's got to find <laughs> stuff um i remember that dick, i was watching a dick buckus uh, documentary that great um linebacker at uh, illinois and then bears and he used to like before games just like run into trees i think it was games or practice he would like run into trees and like deliver yeah. Hit the NFL and I can't imagine what the NFL players think. They're all crazy. <laughs> They're all crazy people. Like taking a taking a hit from like, you know that Georgia D or D line D lineman like Jordan Davis. Oh yeah. Like I can't imagine just him just falling on top of you like three <laughs> three hundred pounds six six just like clobbering you in the back. I just can't imagine. And then just having to having to play the next game with. Play, how many play the next play? Do you think, although it might not be your like biggest asset in football, the hitting part, do you think having experienced that and gotten better with it, has it translated at all to your basketball, like the physicality of rebounding or boxing out? Because I assume after coming off a football season, there's nothing those kids can do to, you know, really manhandle you or physically intimidate you in basketball. Yeah, I like to I like to think um, like during the free throws when you're all lined up, I like to think of it kind of like football. Like the lower man always wins. You're gonna gotta get low on this box out. Just like pretty much arm bar him the entire time during the box out, and that I think that helps me during the box outs and um, especially getting rebounds like climbing up, climbing over people and just hustling after that ball. Yeah. So a big thing, and I think we touched on this earlier. But a, a struggle DS had during the Medfield game was rebounding. Mm -hmm. What do you think it's gonna? What do you think needs to change to turn that around? Were you guys not boxing out? Were you maybe like what, what? What went wrong? Not reading the ball well? Not hustling to the the boards? What What needs to change? Um, I just think that we we just weren't hustling as much as we wanted, and I think um, all five everyone everyone on the team needs to be crashing the boards like like rebounds are pretty much the story of the game wherever we have rebounds is pretty much going to dominate the game that's i think that's why we've had so much success this season like a lot of it's rebounding i think we've out rebound every team maybe not midfield but i think we've had, i think we've out rebound a bunch of teams and rebound has been our strength this season but um and i think number two he he was just trying hard as hard as he could in every rebound and that's why he just 
just like kind of destroy or something. You know, to be honest. Hmm. Interesting. What would you say is your greatest? Actually, I'd like to read off a text I had. I, I told you about this before the interview. So I reached out to Ethan Lynch and Danny Sullivan, and I said, hey, guys, can anyone call me? I'm talking to Brian in an interview in 20 minutes. I'd love to, like, I don't know anything about baseball. Can you give me kind of the rundown about him as a player? And all that I got back was Ethan Lynch said, Brian hits bombs. And then Daniel Sullivan did the up arrow and said, pretty much sums it up. <laughs> is that a fair assessment of your play? Uh that is a pretty fair assessment, but I think hitting is is my strongest asset of the game, and um, that's what I love to do. I just like to hit bombs, hit dingers. Yeah, hit dingers. What what makes a guy good at hitting dingers? Um, well, obviously it helps to be big, but also like baseball, there's a ton of technique in it. And like getting your hands back, having a strong swing, keeping your wrist strong. I mean, like there's a ton that goes into um, like hitting, hitting the ball hard. But I think mostly it's just being big that helps you a ton. Mm. Do you think you use your size well? Yeah, I think I use my size well, especially in the outfield with like chasing down balls um, and like um like laying out i guess but I, I don't really lay out that much but when i do like it really helps me to have the length and the speed mm. especially on the outfield what what's one thing you want to improve on in your baseball game one thing uh definitely throwing uh, my arm strength like um, it's not that strong, but it's, it's pretty strong, but it's not, it's not as strong as I'd like it to be. Um, especially from the outfield again, um, like outfield needs to have big arms, big, big curl hops, and, uh, they need to be able to throw people out at home. And, uh, I definitely need to work on my arm strength. Mm. Yeah. What's the furthest you've ever hit a baseball? As of now, I've hit one. 394 feet wow i need to i need to get that above 400 right <laughs> asap where is like the outfield you or sorry what i don't know what you would call it the um you know the the fence for the home run where is that how far is that usually set up at like dshs how far do you need to hit it to get a homer um well this year uh there wasn't really a fence Especially in right there, there's woods in left field, but there's no fence in right field, unless you hit it into the tennis court, which is like, which is like 450 feet. <laughs> but um, I think that like usually fences are probably like 350 or 320 or something like three around 330 for like mm -hmm. high school. And I think the I think the woods for DS, I think it's around like 310 or something. Oh, um, huh. some. But that's in left field, so I'd have to, I'd have to like hit it the opposite opposite field to get it out. Um, I have a funny story about you know Derek Roman. Uh yes. Yes, yeah, so we were playing medfield in baseball, and he was pitching, and this kid I forget his name, but he was huge, big righty. I think his name was his last name was like Corn or something corn but it's it's something it's something weird it's like corn, corn i forget sure. and then um he just absolutely smashes the ball like the farthest <laughs> ball i've ever seen hit like 450 over the trees <laughs> like everyone just stood there and watched it go and it was like oh my gosh the, the medfield baseball team is actually very good they have a ton yeah. of commits on the team yeah they made it to the state finals right yeah yeah they're very good a lot has That's been the only made, thing that got us in. Yeah. A lot has been made about um, this team next year because you guys finished off the season hot. I know there was a big drought. It was a big drought um, during last season, but you guys finished off strong. Um, you guys have got a ton of returners. You didn't lose um, a lot of seniors. Mm -hmm. 
Tell me about how you foresee the baseball season going. I'm actually very excited for the baseball season this year. Um, as you said, we didn't really lose anyone. Um, and especially with Ethan, Curtis, Dan, um, Jack Potter's coming. Um, Derek Roman's going to be back. Um, I think the team is going to be pretty good, but uh, we don't get we don't really get that many fans. But I think we will once once our record once our record goes up. I think we will. Mm -hmm. Is is Medfield going to be a, a really good team again this year too in baseball? Um, I don't really know about their like I don't know really know about their who's committed. I don't know if they lost as many seniors. But I assume they're going to be pretty good, especially coming off a, a great season they had last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely a team to worry about. Definitely tough. Uh, TVL baseball is very good. Tell me a little bit about the landscape of TVL baseball and why do you think it's so strong? Um, I think it's. I don't really know why it's so strong, but like Hopkinson's good. Hopkinson's good. Uh, Westwood's pretty good. Dedham. Bellingham, actually Bellingham, but um, Medway is pretty good. Um, who else? Like Medfield, I think they're all very good teams, and uh, I think it's gonna be a good season this year. Mm. Brian, final question: If someone like a middle schooler was listening to this and they said, "Man, that Brian Olson is a stud. He's a football star, baseball star, basketball star." I want to be like him. I want to play varsity. I want to hit game winning shots. What would your advice be to them to get to where you're at now? My advice would be, you got to want it. You got to want and it. If you, if you set your mind to something, you can do it. I mean, if you want to be three sport athlete, good grades, you just got to put in the work. I mean, like what, while your friends are having fun, you just got to put in the work. You got to actually want to be the best person you, be, you could possibly be. 100%. Brian, thanks so much for coming on the Young Shakespeare podcast. No problem. Been that has been – oh, sorry, say again? It's been a pleasure. It has. It has been for me as well. And I'm so glad that the power actually didn't go out. Because yeah, me too. Lights flickered early on. It threw me. But – Shoot or shoot. So I kept competing. I finished off the podcast. No sweat about it. So I appreciate everyone listening, watching, liking, subscribing, and sharing. Thanks to Brian Olson, Brian Thompson for coming on the podcast. And uh, tune in for the next episode.